Hello and welcome to another Imperator Invictus developer diary and well, it's a good one it's about this place here this is Cyrenaica but before we go into that there's a couple of little bits of things that I want to go over just before we get into it so first off uh, of course I'm just gonna shill again the Imperator Invictus um, Twitter account uh, all the news and stuff for Imperator Invictus is shared here along with Twitter teasers like this one from yesterday, uh, just teasing the missions that we're going to be going over today, and also sharing uh, when the Imperator Invictus developer clash is going on. We have Vespasian doing the um, the Observer perspective, I am playing as Rome, and we have Dan is stoned playing as Carthage, although I think he's gone on holiday so he won't be able to make the next session. Uh, but he'll probably be back after that. He's playing as Carthage. And, yeah, it's a lot of fun. You should go and check this out. Um, I'm just watching through the uh, the Observer uh, perspective right now. Maybe this is a bit of a spoiler, but, uh, eh, it is what it is. Um, but, yeah, you should go check this out. You should go check out the Dev Clash. It's a lot of fun, and uh, that will be on my channel before too long, though I can't say exactly when. Right, but that's all out of the way. Let's talk about this here, Cyrenaica Mission Tree. Today I'll be talking about part one of the Cyrenaica content coming in the future. At the end of the Dev Diary, you can find the latest patch notes from the hotfix on Sunday. Hello, I'm Torugu, who was playing as Tartessia in the Dev Clash yesterday. And he's working on the Cyrenaica expansion that will be coming up in Imperator Invictus soon. My content will add flavour to just about every aspect of your Cyrenaica playthrough, including a more historical starting setup, new deities for the native Libyans, new holy sites, new bloodlines, and more historical characters. The main feature, however, are the Cyrenaica missions, and it's a big one. Currently planned are six mission trees. That is huge. I could just, just think about it, right? How many mission trees does Rome have? I believe it's four. Um, the Antigonids kind of cheat because they can take Macedonian missions, but they're hovering around the, you know, four or five area. Um, Thrace has got like three. Egypt's got like three. Um, having six unique missions just for Cyrenaica is insane. The, the level of, of content we're getting here, and it's not, it's not just splatter some shit at a wall and see what sticks it's not just you know the you know this will do right it's it's just we want more stuff to go in we'll just throw it in it doesn't matter if it's good it's not like that it's it's really good quality missions and it's it's an actual just marvel uh at what these guys are doing i am incredibly impressed it's uh it's quite inspiring for sure uh but yeah six Planned mission trees with a total of 90 to 100 tasks. That's insane. Uh, roughly the same number of tasks as the vanilla missions for Roman Carthage. So, okay, maybe they're, the individual missions are a little bit smaller than e individually Roman Carthage gets. But, ah, it's, it, you know, it is what it is, right? But that's still, Roman Carthage have the most content, right? In, in Imperator, that's... I, it's, it's just impressive. It's impressive. Let's just leave it at that and let's move on. So, the new Cyrenaica. Spot the differences. Um, I don't know if my game is updated with this. It might have been. Let me just have a look. This is my Cyrenaica. I don't see anything new, if I'm being honest. Maybe an extra city. I honestly... I th generally, when I'm playing... In this area, I've never played actually as Cyrenaica, but generally, if I'm uh, if I'm playing as say Egypt, it's a conquer it and forget about it. Uh, there's there's generally not a whole lot of actual content. There's not a whole lot of time spent over here. It's generally fairly well behaved. It doesn't rebel very much. Um, I can't tell the difference. Just being on. Uh, you know what? Actually, the cities have changed. The cities have changed. Barca is inland. All right, there's a city. There's a city here in uh, in in the change. So I haven't actually got the full change. We're missing a city here. It's moved down to Barca. Uh, all right, that, that's okay. There's a, there's a difference. I found it. I found it. I earned myself a gold star. I don't have anything on hand that looks like a gold star, so we're just gonna pretend that I got a gold star. So. Uh, everything is work in progress, obviously, um, naturally. 
The vanilla game represents Cyrenaica as an independent nation. Most mods I can think of change them to be a subject of Egypt, which is arguably better representative of the historical reality. But we're not going to talk about this for now. Something very special planned for the first Cyrenaica tree, but it's not quite ready to be revealed yet. Look forward to part two of the dev diary coming soon, I assume. Instead, we'll talk about some of the choices you have once you've won your independence and been crowned King of Cyrenaica. Unless noted otherwise, you are free to complete these missions in any order once you've completed the initial independence tree. Uh, I wonder if uh, they're going to get a, a unique independence tree, or if they are going to share the subject independence tree that all subjects have. So, first off, Avenging Ophilas. Just before the start of the game, Agathocles of Syracuse convinces the previous ruler of Cyrenaica, Ophilas, to lead an invasion force into Carthage. Ophilas was promised any territory in Africa that they could conquer while Athocles, Agathocles, Agathocles, the tyrant of Syracuse, uh, would receive the Carthaginian positions in Sicily. Ophelas' army successfully penetrated into Carthaginian lands. However, when his army met up with that of Agathocles, he was betrayed and attacked by his own ally. Ophelas was killed in the fighting, which and what remained of his army absorbed into the Syracusan army, and Cyrenaica's ambitions westward ended there. So we've got a mission tree about avenging Ophelas. Vengeance against Syracuse. Loving that, loving that. Cyrenaica's new rulers might not care terribly much about Ophelos personally, but that doesn't stop them from using it as an excuse if they want to pick a fight with Ophelos' old enemies. Thus, avenging Ophelos' tree is divided into two paths. The left branch focuses on invading Carthage, while the right branch is all about getting back at Syracuse. Note that the first task of each branch locks you out of the other branch for several years. Thus, you can follow both paths simultaneously eventually, but you'll have to pick which objective to pursue first. I think, uh... Getting back at Syracuse, it's, yeah, vengeance, vengeance, for sure. Uh, in preparation for your invasion of Carthage, you can try to recruit adventurers from the Greek mainland. In practice, this works by giving you a temporary mercenary state subject, which will fight for you like any other subject. However, the bigger benefit that might, that, the bigger benefit, words, they're actually difficult sometimes might be that once you've conquered some land in Africa, the mercenaries will ask to settle in a territory. If given permission, a sizable fraction of the subject capital pops will move to one of the conquered territories where we'll found a city, giving you a bunch of free healing pops and a free city. That's actually really cool. That's super cool. I like that a lot. Like, that's, that's, yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally down for that. That's awesome. Sweet. Second half of the Carthaginians, the Carthaginians, word, I just said words are hard. The second half of the Carthage branch is all about founding Greek colonies in Punic lands. A number of tasks either give you free cities. I like free cities because free cities, I mean, cities are good in the current meta. Uh, but they're also very expensive. So getting free cities, like what Rome gets with its missions with the Colonia, is amazing. It's like one of the best benefits you could possibly get. And, you know, I'm all, I'm all for more of that. Um, it'll give you either free cities or reward you with settlers if you found them manually. Finally, once you've taken the city of Carthage itself, you'll have to choose how to deal with your new Punic citizens. Either integrate the Punic culture, giving you access to the Punic military traditions, or spread Hellenic culture to the west. <laughs> Excuse me. And giving significant bonuses to assimilation speed, but at the cost of a massive happiness penalty. No salt, I guess, for these Punics. The Syracuse branch is a bit shorter and mostly focused on invading the city of Syracuse. To help you along, you have the option of purchasing a small sleet. Small sleet? What is my words today? That they're not coming out properly. A small fleet of heavy ships from shipbuilders in Greece. Your planned invasion might even receive some support from the widow of the dead Ophilas. She happens to start the game married to Antigonus's heir Demetrius, and if the Antigonids make it through the Diadochi War intact, her help might be quite substantial. Note that this does not mean Demetrius will send his armies. So, I actually had no idea about this part. Demetrius. Eurydike Militatidid. She's Athenian, Hellenic. There's, there's literally nothing that shows that she is Ophelas's widow, but you know, I'm just I'm gonna believe her. You know what? <laughs> Ophelas. Uh, da, da, da. Is this the one? Ptolemaic governor of Cyrene. Yes. Marriage. Wife. Marriage. Eurydice of Athens. 
Huh. That's actually really cool. That's super cool. I had no idea. And the game actually makes zero mention of it. Like, none whatsoever. That's a crying shame. Like, when you start a game as the Antigonids, this character is one of those ones where it's like, well, I'm going to replace her with uh, Daedemia very soon, so who cares? She's irrelevant. She's too old to have children. She has one child. That's the wrong person. She has one child, at least. Uh, but it, she's a completely irrelevant character. Um, but that's really cool that there's actually some more to her than than that. And, you know, if, uh, if Imperator Invictus is bringing that out... That's really cool. I'm I'm so down for that. That's that's really nice to see. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. She happens to have the game Marito and Dignus is there. That's lovely stuff. It doesn't mean that Demetrius will send his armies. Yeah, because probably he'll he'll get the uh, Ethereum bride, um, and and she will again be irrelevant. But uh, yeah. Uh, once a city is conquered, you're given the choice on how to punish it for Agathocles' transgressions. You could, of course, leave them unharmed or kill everyone. Uh, but if you want to be more economical, you could also send the entire city into exile somewhere else in your empire. I love this. This this kind of thing I'd love to see more of. Um, the ability to, like, do a cultural... Oh, what, what's, what's, the, what's the thing called? Uh, where you where you send your kid to a different country to go to school there for a bit? There's there's a word for it. It's I don't can't remember though. I never did it. Uh, but that a foreign exchange program is is I, there's but there's another word. This is like a fancy word. Erasmus. Erasmus. You do, you're gonna do a big big fat Erasmus, right? You take half the population of a place you've just conquered and you spread that population throughout your entire empire. Uh, nowhere getting like a big chunk of them, but like spread them thinly, like like too much, too little butter spread over too much toast. Thanks, Bilbo. Uh, do that, and then you put your pops to replace them, so you're not losing any population there. I want to see that as an option for like all conquests. If you want to be like a big fat tyrant, like I want to see that a lot more. That is, it's a cool idea, and if the modders are able to make that work. I kind of want to see more of it. That's that's a that's a neat idea. It's a very neat idea. Uh, I guess you could also... Uh, you don't have to rule Sicily for yourself if you don't feel like it. And you can form the Sicilian League. Not a big fan of the flag, not going to lie. Alright, lovely stuff. We have Aegean Dominance. Somewhat smaller than the Ophelas tree, this tree has you completing three objectives. Conquering Crete... Acquiring and developing the ancient homeland of the Cyrenes in Thera, and establishing hegemony over the Aegean Sea. Thera is this one, right? Yes, it is. Oh, it's, it's called Thera now. Yeah, that one's Thera. Uh, but yeah, conquering Crete seems like a good... I mean, it's it's generally the first step for any Cyrenaican player that I've seen in a multiplayer. Uh, mostly because there ain't no iron here, and there's some very important iron in in Polherenia. So, I've seen that quite a lot. Although, horses from here, I think I remember, yeah, horses from here being uh, important. Uh, I've seen that quite a bit as well. Uh, but yeah, lovely stuff. Uh, establishing hegemony over the Aegean Sea, as you would want to do. The Cretan branch gives you the opportunity to acquire a foothold in Crete by helping one of the local powers in their wars against their neighbours. Once the war is won, your chosen ally will become your subject. The Thera branch will help you along as you build up the small island of Thera into a major regional power. For that, though, you'll ha first have to take control of the Cyclades. Unfortunately, the Cyclades start the game as a vassal of the Antigonids. Fortunately, the mission tree offers you a way to convince them to switch to your side, though you'll have to prove that you're a better overlord than the Antigonus. Than Antigonus, not the Antigonus. Yes, very nice. Uh, lovely stuff. Wooing the Cycladic Islands, that's awesome. Return to Thera. Good stuff. Once Crete is conquered and Thera is developed, all that's left is to conquer Rhodes and make sure you control at least 30 island territories in the Aegean Sea to complete your hegemony. If 30 sounds like a lot, keep in mind that Crete alone has 12 territories or so. Uh, okay, so they're counting... It's not just... You see, 
Paradox games often refer to islands in their achievements, uh, but what they consider an island would be a single territory that is un surrounded entirely by water. Uh, like, this is an island. This is an island. Uh, this is an island. They generally don't consider things like Crete to be islands because each individual province has land borders with other provinces. It's strange, and I think it's probably down to code reasons, uh, but I imagine that the way that this mission tree is done is not a case of if island in Aegean area, then Big Juju, right? That's probably not what's happening. Probably what's happening is if any of the following provinces, this one, 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 etc. So what Paradox does is a lot more efficient, whereas what the modder is doing is a lot more accurate, which is... It's a trade-off. It is a trade-off. Um, is it one that is worth it? Depends. If you've got a really good PC, then you will be unaffected. If you've got a really bad PC, that kind of thing done a lot can make a difference. So, yeah, I mean, it, it makes complete sense that the, uh, the, the developers would go with uh, the less accurate shortcutty version. Uh, that is a thing that happened in... I'm thinking mostly of EU4. Uh, there's some achievements for owning a bunch of islands, and yeah, not a lot of islands actually count. Um, anyway, uh, but uh, something to do with becoming a pirate nation, I believe, is when I heard it. Yeah, because it didn't count Great Britain as an island, because you have to be an island nation, and you couldn't be Great Britain because Great Britain had. Well, yeah, whatever. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the final mission I want to show off today is about the internal politics of Cyrenaica. At the beginning of the game, it isn't quite clear what Cyrenaica actually is. It's obviously a country with a clearly defined border and an independent ruler, since you have completed the first unannounced mission. But is it a successor to the old Greek kingdom of Cyrenaica? A Diadochi state along the lines of Thrace or Egypt, or maybe even a collection of autonomous city republics? Who knows? In game, you'll both be able to settle the question using the four key tasks circled in the mission above. I don't know if this I'd consider this a circle. It's more like a, it's it's like a a rectangle. It's just just you know, getting a getting a bronze medal for you know a for effort kind of thing. You know, the center two are fairly safe, but other road options. They both represent alternative forms of monarchy based on the old pre-Persian kingdom of Cyrenaica. The outer two, however, are more radical. Expel the foreign kings will get rid of the monarchy entirely, converting your country into a republic. Diadochi King, on the other hand, allows you to form the Magid Kingdom, a Macedonian successor state along the lines of the Ptolemies, Seleucids, etc. Ah, uh, look at that flag, though! That flag is gorgeous! That flag is absolutely delightful. It's absolutely delightful, and I'm here for it, and I want it. You know what? Um, generally, you you rate countries based on how good their map color is. Map Maggot Kingdom, it ain't bad. It's not terrible. It ain't bad. And also on how good their flag is. Nothing else matters. So Maggot Kingdom, A. It's it's an A. It's it's in. We're we're probably gonna do a tier list, right? Maggot Kingdom would be an A. I'm I'm. The Roman Revolt. S tier. S, S tier, yeah. Anyway, uh, screenshot is from the test version without rest of Invictus. Don't overinterpret. Fair enough. However, making radical changes to your government is not a simple matter. Over the course of the tech tree, each choice you make, and there are many, will increase monarchist or republican support within your country. To take the outermost task, you will need a certain amount of republican or monarchist support. However, if you acquire too much of the opposite kind of support, your country will erupt in civil war the moment you click complete task. Very nice. I love that. I love that. Um, getting support from the internal workings of your country, bringing the characters more in line uh, with, with the various things that you're doing um, is a really nice thing, and I like that a lot. That's, you know, Maggot Kingdom, this this whole mission tree, it gets, it gets a thumbs up from me. I am enjoying what I'm seeing right now. 
Uh, there was also the patch note of the latest hotfix, which has already gone out. Major powers now have access to full Legion laws as a temporary workaround instead of only great powers. That means that if you are the Antigonid Kingdom and you wish to pass uh, this royal army law, you do not need to have great power status, which is six, no, 500 uh, territories. You just need to be a major power at 100, which is very welcome <laughs> it is very very welcome um it brings you on par with republics which can get them at like 25 50 territories i think uh because once rome gets the marian reforms every other republic gets a oh by the way rome's done these fucking reforms they look pretty f cool you want to try these uh you just have to be smaller than rome and be uh power of sorts what kind of power are we you have to be maybe a regional i would imagine i don't know uh but you have to be smaller than rome as well so yeah every republic can get it easily um it's much harder for uh kingdoms to compete on that level so it's nice that that has changed uh removed inappropriate localization from a formable um i've said this before uh i mean it was in it was in my previous dev diary um but I have seen people ask about what this was, and I've seen the answer be, don't worry about it, it's not, it's not a problem anymore, or it's not a problem at all. Um, I think that is the wrong way to go about things, because I think that not answering what was inappropriate makes people think, oh, the worst. It could be racist or it could be uh sexist or homophobic or any of the above like that, that saying inappropriate and not telling what it was inappropriate is not in my opinion a, a good thing to do i think you need to be open and be like yeah this was it it's gone now that's perfectly fine um the inappropriate formable was for israel uh when you form it as judea or samaria and it was the jews be popping off it's not explicitly racist, but it can be observed as such. It can be interpreted as being um, anti-Semitic. So it was removed. That's perfectly valid reason why. Um, I just think that it needs to be pointed out what it actually was before people think, you know, if maybe a little hint of the truth came out and, oh, it was the formable was for Israel. Oh. Oh, is it X, Y, and Z? No, you can't do that. You have to be open and honest about things. So, there you go. I uh, take the matter into my own hands. Uh, considering I was, the, I was the one that found the inappropriate localization, I mean, that's... I get to decide whether it goes out or not, you know? Whatever. Anyway, uh, and finally, mix, fixed a bug with the Macedonian Rodopes tree, checking the Roman province. Good stuff. Uh, Rodopes tree is a mission tree called, like, going after the redopes or up to the redopes or something like that uh but yeah that's uh that's the that's the that's the dev diary i like this quite a lot i like this uh this mission tree it seems very interesting there's some very nice ideas in here as well not just for serenaica but that have wider ramifications for other missions and other just gameplay elements going forward and that does make me very very happy so, I would like to know if that makes you very happy. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Have you played Imperator Invictus? Did you watch the Dev Clash last night? And will you be uh, will you be trying out Cyrenaica? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.